all right folks so i'm in my f-150 here i got the radio it's on <laughs> the key is out um if i turn this a little farther forward then the radio goes off but if i turn the key back to where it will come out then the radio a lot of times powers back on it there it powered back on and the other thing that I'm noticing is I have a beep, but it's a weird beep. You hear that beep? Now this is the beep with the key in. Okay, so that's got, and so I take the key out and I get that beep. Also, if I turn the lights on, I get that beep. So what's happening here is, uh, there is a metal piece in this ignition that grounds uh, when the key is in there. And so it knows the key's in it. And so it's not seeing that metal piece. It's saying, hey, the key's out. So I'm, I'm gonna try to reset the beep, but the computer still sees that this ignition is in the accessory position with the radio on. And so that's where it's kind of, I'm pretty sure it kind of resets and then it beeps and it resets and it beeps. At least that's what I think is going on. So I think the problem is actually the ignition switch. And so I just picked one up in advance. We're gonna try replacing it. This just started happening this morning when I got to work, but uh, we're gonna try replacing the ignition switch. I don't think it's the lock cylinder. The lock cylinder seems fine. It's just, this feels kind of spongy through here too when it's moving through the motions. It's not as defined as it used to be. So I've taken out uh, some of these bolts. Sorry about the dinger. <laughs> but there's a bolt here. There's a bolt over here. There was two bolts in each of these brackets. One, one down here on the bottom and one up in the front. So one down here, one up here. And then there's a metal bracket. Down here you gotta take two eight millimeter bolts out here. And now I gotta see if this thing will pop out. I don't know. It's acting like it don't want to pop out. But there we go. Okay. So now, uh, I don't know. Let me uh, let me take this piece out completely and see what's down here. fits it does there we go all right yeah oh there's still something holding the air I dropped it. There it is. Okay. All right. I will just move that down and out of the way. And this is our ignition switch right up here. Uh, it looks like this plug is a seven millimeter. So it would appear to me that with this unplugged, I still got a dinger going on. So that tells me it's nothing in the switch. So it's not this darn ignition switch, doggone it. <laughs> so 
So it's interestingly enough, I pull this fuse right here. There's the word ding. Radio's on. Pull the fuse. Radio goes out. The ding stops. So I need to see what that fuse feeds. Let's see if what's going on. The cigarette lighter's still on now. I don't know. We'll have to see. This is a, uh, a 30 amp <laughs> factory fuse, 30 amps. So we'll have to see what that feeds. I don't know. Oh, yeah, Ford doesn't give you anything but numbers on their diagram. So that will be fuse number. 11 all right folks so here's what I found if I pull fuse 14 the sound goes away if I pull fuse f2-11 the sound goes away if I pull f2-8 the noise goes away and so uh, I look at f2-8 that's the gym module and the radio and so I think that that's getting power back fed to it from somewhere. I tried unplugging the radio in the car just to make sure that wasn't it. That was not it. Um, F2-11 is the windshield washer relay, uh, wiper run park relay, wiper high low relay, and the wiper washer wiper motor. Um, I do not have working windshield wipers now with my, uh, that's another thing I discovered, the wipers don't work. So if that's interesting. And then when I pull fuse 14, it also goes away and that's a battery saver relay and an interior lamp relay. I pulled these two relays and it didn't make any difference, but pulling the fuse does make this noise go away. I also noticed when I pulled out these two relays that they're hot. Like they're drawing current through them or something. But again, pulling those out didn't seem to make a difference. So somehow we're getting power through here. So I'm looking, I decided to chase down the windshield washer circuit first. Um, just to see. And so I'm thinking when I pull fuse 2-8, it's pulling this power to the gem module, which is what's making the dinging sound. And so the dinging sound goes away and it also happens to kill the radio. I'm thinking the problem is here because I have no wiper control, but I pull this fuse from the wipers and it works. So I pulled up, I went ahead and went into Mitchell and pulled up the wiper relay diagram because all data doesn't seem to have one. <laughs> and so um, what we see here is the wiper one park relay, the uh, wiper high low relay and the washer pump relay. I tried pulling all three of these relays, right? At, well, let's see, I pulled these two and then I pulled uh, now I pulled this one, I pulled the wiper run park relay and the wiper high low relay at the same time. But then I did not pull the washer pump relay, but then I pulled the washer pump relay, but I already in reinstalled these two. So my thinking is this is actually controlled by the gym module. And so, you know, you have your park sense. So what happens here? is it engages this, right? And so when this is engaged, it pulls this over to a run position. So the park sense, it's no longer parked, right? And then when you release it, it unlatches, goes to park sense to tell the gem module that it's parked, but it's controlled through this ground here. This one is controlled here. The washer pump is just the ground, okay? ground side controlled relay that's going to allow energy to go to the washer pump and then this one is the riper speed relay and so when it's on high this grounds closes this relay to go to high instead of low and so what I want to do is pull all three of those relays at once first let's see if the noise goes away 
but then what I'm going to do is take my test light out and we're going to check for a ground here when it should be grounded. We're going to check for a ground here when it should be grounded and check for a ground here when it should be grounded and see if maybe this gem module has gone nuts and it is back feeding voltage up through. Um, we also have the wiper motor itself, right? Which has quite a bit of stuff in it. And so the wiper motor itself uh, could be, you know, where it gets its voltage. Let's see here. Black, light blue. Uh, it gets it from this white black wire. There could be something going on here and it's feeding it back through this, right? But I would think if that was the case, then I pulled um, the wiper park and the wiper high-low relays out at the same time. I don't see how else it would uh, backfeed. Um, there's its ground point. We could check its grounds, but I don't see any other way for that to backfeed if I pull both of those relays out. Unless, it's coming, well, no, the park sense would, would go away with that relay or should. So I'm going to just kind of go through and check all these. I might check, I might try unplugging this wiper motor if I want to go in there and get to it as well and just see if that's what's doing it because when I pull fuse F11, it goes away on F11. I just have the washer, washer, run park, wiper, and wiper motor is all I have. So there's nothing else running on those fuses. So somehow I think this is back feeding into the system. Um, I don't know how, but we're going to go find out. I'm hoping I don't have a bad gem module, but I did have a bad gem module before. And I remember it was back when it was still under warranty. And it had the dinging, the constant dinging when you opened the door. And I remember that the wipers wouldn't work. <laughs> so that was 20 years ago while it was under warranty, but same symptoms. So we're going to see. So here's something else that's interesting. You notice right now it's just ding, 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 ding. A perfect little harmony. The wipers are off. What happens if I turn the wipers on? I get the weird ding, hear that? There I get a regular ding with them off. Something's going on in that wiper circuit that's causing this. Anyway, you can see I've had the radio out and unplugged and I got everything kind of tore apart here. but. What we're gonna do is grab the needle nose and go pull all three of these relays at the same time. Okay, so I'm gonna pull the washer run relay, which is this one. Okay, and then I'm gonna pull the uh, I think this is the run park relay. Right here, it's this one. The top one there, that's AC. It's this one. And now I'm gonna pull the uh, wiper motor washer pump, washer pump relay. And I still have ding, 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 ding. So it's not back feeding through these relays. And we can pull these other ones out just to see. And they're not doing a thing. So what does that mean if I don't 
if I pull all three of those relays out, that means it's not back feeding. It's not. It's not uh, back feeding power through the gym. It's not back feeding power. It's got to be something back feeding power from here. Somehow, I don't know how. real interesting but yet if I take fuse 11 out this 30 amp one right here it kills it all right folks so um, this is unplugged now I got the three relays out for the wiper control um, and you notice now this doesn't change the sound of the ding anymore with those relays out. That's good, it tells me it's not something on the control side of the gem module, because this hooks to the control side. Uh, my radio still has some power there. And so now I'm gonna hook to the power feed side of this relay. So here's the relay we're looking at. I'm gonna hook to this side or this pen right here that is part of the control power feed. The power feed to the control side of the relay with my test light. My, it's not enough to light my test light. But that quarter amp going through the test light is enough to power off the radio. The dinging goes away, right? So that tells me that there is some power getting through to that circuit. It's enough power to power the radio to make the dinger go. When the wipers are on, it tries to activate the wiper circuit and that's what's causing the reset, right? It's like trying to activate the wiper circuit and it's like, nope, not enough current. And then it, it de deactivates and then it comes back on and dings again. That's what that little pause dinging is about. So how can we get power through to this? Because this all comes off a of fuse, F30, right here. And um, right here, we know that we unplug that, it goes away. We've pulled all the relays out. So how would it be getting power back? So we definitely have something weird happening with, uh, this wiper motor circuit it's got to be because it could be when i pull the fuse i kill the power to the wiper motor circuit so wherever it's bleeding power back off and the only place i could figure what might be happening is right here is it saying that this isn't parked or something because these are spliced together and this, if it got power going to it, could provide power to the park sense. And see, the, the park sense actually grounds out to this ground when it's parked. And when it's unparked, it comes over here and it gets positive voltage. So that, with the relay out, couldn't backfeed into this. But we're killing the power to this circuit, so it's no longer giving me anything on this park sense for the wipers so is that enough to make the dinger go off i don't know but i think what we're going to do is go unplug the wiper motor and see what happens all right so here's the moment of truth is that back feeding from the wiper motor power feed right here coming around down to the wiper motor and back feeding to this park sense circuit into the gem module cause of the dinging effect. <laughs> Is it happening? Is that what's happening? Here's the wiper motor. Let me get it unplugged. Oh, and we have no dinging. We have no dingy ding. No power to the radio. So we have a bad wiper motor 
causing all those ignition problems and all those dinging problems. Isn't that interesting? Wow. I just decided to start one day on my way to work. <laughs> all right, so now I gotta see what I gotta do to get this wiper motor assembly and get it replaced. But, yep. So, something in there. So, I guess that's the gem module dinging to say, hey, the wipers aren't parked or something. I don't know exactly what it dings for for that, but that's what was causing it. So now we're getting another wiper motor and we'll try it. I'll go ahead and check powers and grounds on this real quick, make sure. But I'm pretty sure at this point it's a wiper motor. But we can check the powers and the grounds on it. And uh, make sure. Hmm. Interesting. All right, so I'm just gonna check the ground on this guy real quick, just to make sure that the ground's good and that that's not, if the ground was bad, it could be back feeding voltages weird ways or something. Uh, I know it was getting power and I got the ignition uh, switch unhooked right now and I, I'm gonna try to return it. So uh, I don't want to, to pull it back out of the box. And this is the ground, okay. And we have a good, we have a good ground. So this one actually should back feed the relay. Yep, see when I back, when I back feed this, I get dinging again. So that's the wire I was back feeding into. Okay. So I'm gonna get a wiper motor. All right, so I got the new wiper motor just sitting here plugged in and I have no dinging. <laughs> no dingy ding, no radio being powered on. So yeah, it was the wiper motor, all right. <laughs> wow, I'm gonna plug the old one back in just to make sure it still does it. All right, so that one's unplugged and now we're gonna plug in the original one. And we have dinging. You can hear it. So sure enough, wiper motor causing problems with the ignition. Wow, I'd never seen that before. It happened on my own vehicle too. So now I gotta figure out how exactly you change this thing. Looks like there's bolts on the bottom of this bracket too. Looks like you gotta pull out this whole wiper control arm assembly to get that change. Great. Thanks Ford for not making the bolts on the top. Ford making it easy. All right, folks, so I got the wiper motor in. Got the wipers back on. Get that wiper motor, you gotta get that assembly up out of there and you gotta get this eight millimeter bolt behind it and turn it to get the clearance to get it up out of there. Mike from 1A Auto has an excellent video on how to do these. I will post a link to his video. He takes the hood uh, struts loose and puts the hood all the way up. He, I didn't have to do that, but um, <clears throat> it's kind of a pain. <laughs> but I, I got it in there. Everything's in time, it's working. Got that all put back, the fuse cover's back. Um, I got the interior all put back together. So I have no door dinger. No dinger, no dinging, no power to the radio now. Great. So now, let's start up and see. So let's turn the ignition on and see if the wipers work. They do. See if the washer pump works. It does. They work on intermittent. They work on high, low, intermittent. Yep, so it's all good, it's all good. All that caused by a bad wiper motor. <laughs> good times. All right, folks, so that was just a quick one. I just kind of brought you along on my cell phone and did a little bit of video. I, I didn't film the whole process of taking everything apart. Like I said, Mike from 1A Auto has an excellent video on how to get to that wiper motor and get it out of there. Um, so I wasn't gonna necessarily do another one. 
but I wanted to bring you through the troubleshooting process and going through the wiring diagrams and and you know the wiring diagrams here and trying to figure out what's actually going on um, so now I got to take my core back up to advance and uh, my truck is back in business all right <laughs> all right I'll talk to y'all later this is Tom your frugal prepper